everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, happy Easter, by the way, everyone. And in honor of Easter, we have back by popular demand, Professor Timory Hagenberger, who is going to make a lovely plant-based, whole food plant-based Easter brunch, including corn fritters and asparagus with a dill sauce and a fun fruit salad. Please welcome her back to the show. How are you, Timory? I am doing wonderful. The sun is shining here. It is gorgeous. We're in the mid, mid 80s today. So it's going to be a beautiful day. There's no humidity, knock on wood. I know the days are limited that we don't have humidity, but we've been enjoying the weather. We've been opening the windows and it's wonderful. That is fabulous. I'm so you can see by what I'm wearing a sweater that it's not got that yet here <laughs> in your former <laughs> neck of the woods where I now live. Yes, no, but it will, it'll warm up. It'll be great. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a fantastic summer and hopefully we'll have a nice spring to enjoy those in-between temperatures. So that is precisely what the theme of this brunch is. So sometimes when people think of brunch, they think of really heavy foods, overeating, but not with this one. And this is going to be feeling light, but also satisfying and easy. We want easy because we want to focus on spending time with family and friends, we're just relaxing because all of us have busy, busy weeks. So when it comes to the weekend or a Sunday morning, it's really nice to have something that is simple, but really tasty. So I always love to remake recipes that were also really formerly greasy, fried, you know, but then I also love corn. So I am going to make some corn fritters today. And so I have some of the ingredients here. So I'll talk through them and I'll talk through some changes. Um, the traditional fritter is fried. So we're gonna bake. Um, so <laughs> it is gonna heat up the kitchen, but it's not gonna be for too long. Um, so I'm going to do the corn fritters, get those in the oven. Then I will whip up the dill, uh, lemon dill sauce, and I'll show you how I do the asparagus the easiest way ever to do asparagus. And then I'll show you a fun fruit salad that is gonna be perfect no matter what the person's preferences. So it's a, the foodie bar way style, which really just takes the pressure off of everybody to eat the same, but we're all eating together. So we'll get to that in time. All right, the first recipe is the corn fritter. And what I'm going to do is I split. So all the recipes are going to be available. There's a link in the description on YouTube. So you just hit more and you look down. There's going to be a link and it will take you to a little screen that will have you put in your email address and it will immediately send you an email with a link to the download. And it'll be a PDF document. It'll be three pages, one for each recipe, all the details, easy, easy, easy for you, okay? So you don't have to take notes, any of that. So I'm not gonna talk necessarily about amounts because all those details are in there. So that recipe, I'm using three cups of corn. Now I'm choosing to do frozen corn, we don't, our corn's not quite there um, as far as fresh corn, but you can cut corn right off the cob as well. I, this is organic corn. I like to go with organic. It's a heavily sprayed um, crop. So it's good to do organic and you don't have to worry about the GMO that way. So there's three cups, one cup and two cups. Very important that you split it. So the two cup amount, we're gonna put in a blender. So I'm using my Vitamix blender because it, whoo, it is um, very high speed, high power blender. And my goal here is gonna be to make it into kind of a slurry. So it doesn't need, more like a paste. It doesn't need to be creamy or smooth. It's That's not what you're going for. We're not adding any liquid, okay? So 
this um you could use a food processor a bullet ninja something like that as well so it'll um keep the volume down but i won't be able to talk so i'm just going to run this until it's broken down enough and it's going to act as a binder okay so that's that's part of the binding okay turn this on while she's blending, I'll tell everyone a happy Easter. And there is another show today. We have Tim Kaufman of Fat Man Rants, who used to weigh over 400 pounds. He has a brand new book, Escape, that comes out tomorrow. We'll go grab That's it. Right it. Over there. Super quick. So, and to wash this, I would just scoop everything out, put water, put a little drop of soap, and blend that. And then it'll clean up very fast. Okay, my scrapers. So I am going to put this corn. You know, I'm a super scraper. I even scraped the tamper. Ah, I know. Okay, now we can start to put all of the ingredients together now. So this is the only blending piece. So I'm going to put this in the larger bowl. And as you can see, it almost looks like tomalito. If you've ever had that sweet corn pudding, um, Chevy's used to serve it, but it's thick. Um, so you can tell it's corn, but it's not creamy, okay? As far as where you just keep pureeing, pureeing, pureeing. Hey, but Timory, Timory, yeah. I, I have to say this because I used to work, I put myself through college working at Chevy's. I didn't, you did. yeah, I wasn't a, a cook or a server. They had a balloon company that they contracted with and I was yes. one of the balloon twisters and I used to make really cool table side balloon sculptures, not just like a dog or a sword, but I could make like Michael Jordan shooting a basket and, and tickle me Elmo. And uh, that's so I used to get to eat there for practically free. And oh, I used to love their food. And they had a lot of vegan food. It wasn't oil free, but this was, yeah. this was like 40 years ago. So no, it, that's crazy. I, it's one of, actually, it's one of my favorite restaurants that used to be something I would go to. They're hardly around anymore. There's one in Orlando here, but I know several in Sacramento had closed, but it, I used to love their salsa. On our wedding day, my girls that were part of my um, bridal party, we had lunch at Chevy's with all our hair done with the, uh, um, what is it called on your head? Veil, right? Was put on the hair and everything. And we, we, what were we doing? I was basically drinking salsa at Chevy's. I still think their salsa is delicious. I know, their fire roasted salsa was absolutely the best. Maybe, oh. there's, maybe there's a knockoff recipe for it somewhere because that was delicious. It was. Actually, in the foodie bar way, I have a roasted, fire roasted salsa. And it is really good it is very close to the chevys because owed to chevys for their salsa by far and their veggie fajitas were good their tomolito they put butter in so once you find that out it's like uh -huh. but that's the texture very interesting story <laughs> thank you i worked through um a part of college I worked at the Children's Center on Cal Poly's campus, but when I did an internship in Sacramento, my job was working at Olive Garden, was part of what I was doing to make money. And so that's where I started as a waitress, you know, learning that uh, server, learning that trade. Okay, so we've got the corn in. Now we can add the rest of the ingredients. So I have some fresh kale that I chopped up already for a salad mix, my crazy salad mix. But for this recipe, I want it even smaller. I'm really going for confetti size pieces. So I don't know about you, Chef AJ, but one thing that always makes me pause, and I've mentioned this before, I'm sure with you, 
is that you go out for a kale salad and the pieces are huge and you're just kind of chewing on them and people think, is this what vegan is like? These gigantic pieces of kale that are hard to eat? They need to be chopped small. Kale is just amazing when you chop it small. Yeah, and, and, and especially the stems can be very woody at times. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. I always take the stems, strip the stems, and then I slice those super tiny and put those in my salad mix. So you can also use collard greens in place. So we have, oh, something important we have to do right now, garlic. So if you've seen me before, you know that I grew up with lots of garlic in my life as a little Italian girl. But one thing we did not do was let that garlic rest. So we need to make sure that we are crushing the cell walls. Now I'm just gonna be chopping this garlic here, mincing it, because I'm only doing one, one nice big clove. And I know that Chef AJ has a little Tupperware machine and I have garlic presses and all kinds of things, but for one little, Close, but we want it to sit and we want the health promoting properties to develop. Now I'm adding it to all of our ingredients because I don't have any tomato or any acid and that's what would, or heat. So we'll have enough time that would undermine the garlic or health promoting properties until you give it a few minutes to rest. Okay, so it's resting. Now I'm going to add some more fresh herbs. So I am using cilantro. I love cilantro. If you are not a fan, use parsley, use basil. There's lots of different options that you could even use dill, right? I'm using dill for the sauce with the asparagus, but you can use dill if you like. I wanna put all this cilantro in, but. So I've already washed it. Don't be afraid to use the stems. The stems are going to have flavor and nutrition. So we want small, the theme song for these items is small because we want each bite of these fritters to be able to be a little hearty in your mouth of flavor and texture. And if you have a big piece of something that's gonna take over. Okay, so we're gonna do cilantro. And as far as the amount, I have amounts written, but it's up to you. Okay, now we have bell pepper, baby bells. So I've already cut, these are the sweet ones. So I have an orange and a couple little red ones. So those are gonna go in. I kept one aside because I wanted to show you, I think some of you have seen me before where you know I don't like to waste. Um, so when I cut the top off, I actually, <laughs> This is all that I waste, just the little stem. And these little pieces that are around it, they're excellent, they taste the same. So we don't wanna waste any, we wanna put that in. And then if you don't want the seeds in, you can just take those little seeds right out. I know some people don't like to chop. I think part of it can B, they're in a hurry, but it can be kind of meditative just to focus on what you're doing. And you don't need to get expensive knives. In the foodie bar way of life, we have um, a whole equipment guide that I go through and explain what are my favorites. There's some of our knives are from, these are, this is a Mercer knife, but they're from Ikea, they're extremely reasonable, um, but a sharp knife is very important. 
Okay, so we have the sweet bell peppers, scallions. So I happen to have some leeks growing in my garden tower in the backyard. So along with all kinds of herbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. So normally leeks will be large and very sandy, but these are almost like chives. So they're just baby. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then I kept the scallions whole because I wanted to show a few things. I'm gonna rinse it. Um, okay, so let me get these beautiful leeks in. All right, so it's important to make sure whenever you use scallions that you wash them all the way inside. So I make sure I poke them open all the way, run my finger up, and I'm gonna rinse them right now. Don't just shake them under the, the water. Because I have that um, that leak from in from our backyard, I am going to just put in one scallion. I always use the white and the green. So every so often you'll see recipes that will call for just one. And the whole thing is important. It's an allium vegetable with the onions and the garlic very health promoting, excellent for blood pressure, flavor. Okay, so that goes in. All right, so now I think all we need are some dry ingredients. So I'm gonna move this aside, deal with this. Okay. So now dry ingredients, we are going to further bind it with garbanzo bean flour, okay? So I'm putting in about a quarter of a cup and this will make about 12 fritters, okay? Or close to 30 little tiny like appetizer, one tablespoon size, depending on the size of the scoop you use. Okay, so I give you that direction in the um, recipe. Now, we are going to use some black cumin, nigella sativa. So this is an amazing, we call it black seed in different cultures, uh, amazing seed that has properties many of you know about, everything from lowering cholesterol, even to blood pressure and can even help with diabetes. So I'm gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon. You can add more. It has a peppery kind of, it's a great substitute for black pepper, especially for someone who's sensitive or in addition to using black pepper, which is what we're gonna do. You can always add more. I'm gonna be the one eating this. So I'm gonna add double, but I grind this and I keep it in my freezer. And then I'm gonna add some black pepper as well. So I'm gonna do a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. And I love adding ground mustard. You will see this ingredient resurface when I talk about the sauce, but I keep, I have mustard seeds that I purchased and I grind them and I keep a jar that I just keep refilling, recycling. And I sprinkle that on anything that has greens because it's gonna provide an enzyme that's necessary for, again, promoting the health um, protective compounds that we find in cruciferous vegetables, even if they've already been cooked, okay? So I'm gonna add, um, I love it. So I'm gonna do half a teaspoon, but a quarter to half. 
and it won't be strong. You won't even be able to taste it. Now, speaking of strong, I have um, my son, Austin, and I worked on a recipe years ago. So I think it was like 2012, maybe. And we were working on this recipe for a butternut squash and roasted chili soup. And we came up with Austin Smoky Spice Blend. So this is, I have a little container of it that I keep made along with some other spices. So I'm going to put that in here. I, a funny story, one of my students at the time, I published it on my website, the soup recipe, and she texted me from the grocery store. I can't find Austin Smoky Spice Blend anywhere. I've asked everyone. Nobody, the produce center does, area doesn't know, the spice people, I've been to two grocery stores. I said, because it's Austin, my Austin. Oh, where's the recipe in the soup recipe that you're following? You just have to go down a little bit, scroll down. Oh, I found it. So it's Austin Smoky Spice Blend. Please do not look for this on Amazon. You will not find it, but you will find it in the foodie bar way. All right, so the other ingredient is salt. If you wanted to, I'm not gonna add any, okay? So this is it. So here we have the ingredients and we're just going to mush it together. This scraper is a great scraper, but it's not a great spoon. So I am going to use a wooden spoon. And the other thing I cannot forget is the whole corn. So I reserved one cup of that whole corn because I love the texture of it in there. So now this batter can be, it is very green. I put a lot of greens. This batter can be, um, you can let it sit in the fridge for a bit if you wanted to. It will kind of hydrate the garbanzo bean flour if you wish, um, or you can just get your scoop and start rocking and rolling. So I'm going to make a cookie sheet, baking sheet full. So here is our beautiful batter that is very, very green. Okay. Now, I like to recycle whenever possible. This was the parchment paper I used last to make some fritters. So I will use it again. And my recommendation is a 24 scoop. So this is about two and a half tablespoons. A 60 is one tablespoon, which is great for little finger food, like very small, like one by appetizer. Okay, so it's up to you what you'd like to use. So for this, I'm going to use the bigger number 24. And these scoops don't um, underestimate how much easier they make it compared to just trying to make a ball with a spoon. Yes, you can do it without question, but it really is worth the investment. And you want a scoop that has the spring action, not just like an ice cream scoop. So those are also available, but I don't, these are the ones you wanna use and for muffins, for all kinds of things. Just did a, um, we did a chili foodie bar with a cornbread muffin foodie bar in the foodie bar way. And we have all the recordings. So I, my husband was like, I'm feeling like chili and cornbread. So I went right in there and this makes it so easy. I got all of the cornbread perfect size because I use my scoop and they all cooked evenly 
my little muffins. They were fantastic. And now not only did that feed him last week, but I have some in the freezer of both the chili and the corn muffins for him in a few weeks. I'm gonna turn on my oven. And Timarie, Tim is this what, I, I, have you had your Easter meal yet? Is this what you're making for you and your family? This, yes, this is what we're gonna do. Because we're spread out all over. My parents are still near you in Lincoln. So we're not together, but they were gonna watch me. So if you're watching, I love you, mom and dad. Even if you're not watching, I love you, mom and dad. <laughs> okay. So these are about, it made, you know, I made 13 the last time I did this. And I don't know if I even went a little crazier on the kale this time, but it looks like easily we'll make 12. What are you going to do for your Easter meal, Chef? Oh, gosh, we don't really celebrate. What are we going to do? I'm trying to, well, I made butternut bisque. That's kind of spring-like, you know? I mean, yeah. it's going to have arugula on it and so over rice. So, nice. yeah. No, soup is hard to beat. Soup and chilies are simple and hearty. We like hearty. Okay, so you know I'm a super scraper and I've got enough, it makes 13. I don't know why it's just uneven, it doesn't, so I usually stick this <laughs> last one. I could add a little bit to each one um, or I'll just stick this last one on a little. All right, okay, so these are ready to go. We'll have, just... you ever, have you ever frozen them? Have I frozen them? No, I have not, not. Because I'm, I'm trying to think, did I ever, when I made them in the past? No, um, they are so good that I, I just don't even, I never got there. I never had enough to freeze. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, I freeze a lot of things, a lot of things. Um, and I'm sure they would be fine, but they last at least the week in the fridge if you don't eat them all. They're excellent. And I was worried because it had been a little while. I was trying to figure out what would be the best recipe to do, best recipes to do for you. And it had been a little while since I made them. So obviously I made them again. And I was amazed by how tender they were the next day and the next day and the next day. They didn't get hard and dried out. They were just amazing. So I'm going to stick this in the sink real quick. Wash my hands. Great. And when you come back, I have a question for you from okay. on Instagram named Mastering Macros and Muscles. Nice name. Where can we get or read about information of the benefits of mustard powder with leafy greens? I've never heard that information. Hmm. Nutritionfacts.org. <laughs> strategy for cooking broccoli. That's specifically the video that he where he talks about that. Okay. All right, now, as soon as that oven is ready, we will stick those fritters in there. No grease, no, oh gosh, just heaviness. It'll be fantastic. And now they're just hands off. I want to make the sauce for the asparagus. 
the asparagus, the way that I like to do the asparagus, um, I had a friend years ago, she was having a gigantic shindig for Easter. Like she had at least 40 or 50 people. And she had this enormous stock pot and she filled it with asparagus, filled it with water almost at least halfway and stuck it on the stove and just turned it up high. And I just about, I thought about all of that asparagus in the bottom just turning into mush. And so I kept an eye on it. And as soon as I could get it off the heat, I did. And I rescued all of the asparagus that was on top that was basically steamed. And then the asparagus that was soggy, that's what you would use to make a soup or something. Do not try to serve mushy, stringy, overcooked asparagus to anybody, okay? Because we're in the business of supporting vegetables and that is not a way to wow someone with asparagus. But a way to wow them is actually by cooking it just until it's tender. And one of my favorite ways is to use the broiler. So we're gonna do that after the um, fritters are done, then we'll stick that, we'll do those in the broiler or we can do them in the air fryer, either way. But simply by tossing them, this is a little recipe in my cookbook, but by tossing them with some garlic powder. And remember, we never want to use garlic salt. Garlic powder is very different. Um, so we want to use just garlic powder and it's just garlic. Tossed, these tossed with that. And then just underneath the broiler, you're just watching two minutes, just until they're tender. And then whisk them out of the oven and then serve them with a fabulous, simple drizzle of lemon dill sauce. Okay, let's make that lemon dill sauce right now. Okay, prep bowl. Now, this recipe I put together on the fly because I want, I love dill, I love lemon, I love mustard. And so I thought I need some kind of a drizzle. It was years and years and years ago, but I never wrote down the amounts until I thought, oh, this is a perfect spring because you know, asparagus is a spring veg, perfect spring recipe. However, this sauce, I've drizzled it on broccoli and cauliflower. I've drizzled it on zucchini that I roasted very quickly because zucchini gets off too on roasted carrots brussels I mean there's just any veg that you'd like it will taste amazing okay now there's also some little alterations that I want to offer you as well and that's based on how much sodium is in your diet so first question that you have to answer is what kind of mustard do you love? So I don't use just yellow mustard. I love either whole grain mustard, spicy brown mustard, or Dijon, or where I just get the mustard seeds and grind it. Different mustards will have different amounts of salt added, the prepared mustard. So these are both pretty low. However, this is the lowest because it's just mustard seeds. So you can actually do both or one or the other. So I'm going to show you how I do with a combination. So this is a whole grain mustard. And when I say whole grain, I mean whole grain, whole grain mustard there and this is a Dijon, so this is creamy. If I wanted to entirely avoid the added salt to the, these, I would just use mustard powder. And I'm giving you the amount in the recipe that you would use to start with and then taste and see if you want more. So this is a very, very important um, option that you can take advantage of. Okay, you don't have to drive yourself crazy looking for a low sodium prepared mustard. You can just use mustard seeds, okay, that are ground. All right, so then we need garlic. 
Now you can use garlic powder or I have roasted garlic in this little parchment paper because what we do in our little foodie bar way of life community, we do prep togethers and we love to roast garlic. And so we roast a bunch of garlic and then we wrap it in the um, parchment and then we stick it in the freezer. So now at my fingertips, I have beautifully roasted garlic. So that means I'm going to need a fork to mash it. Normally with this recipe, perfect critters go in. Okay, I'm going to set a timer for 15 minutes. So this recipe for the sauce, you do not need to use a blender. This is just a fork and a bowl. I'm going to take a little extra time to mash that roasted garlic because I don't want just the piece, but oh, it's like butter, that roasted garlic. Okay, so the garlic's in. Could you use garlic powder? Yes, granulated garlic, no question. Now, black pepper. So this is some black pepper. Now, you can also use white pepper. White pepper is hot. So you want to start with a somewhere between a pinch and a dash. <laughs> if you add too much white pepper, there is no way back. You just have to make more and more and more because it is hot, but it's, it adds a really nice dimension. So consider that, but don't add it straight from the jar. Put it into your hand first or the lid and then sprinkle it over. There, even with, here, where's my white pepper? So even with the holes, I changed the top because the holes were too big. Even with these, it just seems to pour out. So I always put it into the lid or my palm and then I put it into my sauce recipe. Okay, so we have the pepper in. Now I'm going to put in dill. So I, there was a little bit of fresh dill at the Asian market, but it didn't look that great yesterday. So I'm using dry dill wheat and I love dill, dill's yummy. And then I, when I was making the recipe with the mustard powder only, not prepared mustard, I wanted to add some more body. So I added flax, ground flax. Now, normally this, well, and flax will add a little bit of the brown specks. And if you don't want that, then you can skip the flax. You can use white chia, you know, there's others, but I love flaxseed and it's, we're not gonna heat this up. So it's nice to be able to use it. So I'm putting in some flax, even though for this, I probably don't need it because of the prepared mustard is the emulsifier, but just to show you, it's another way to use it. Nutritional yeast. We like to look for unfortified so we don't overdo it in folic acid. Folate is a natural form of the B vitamin that comes from foliage, greens, but folic acid is synthesized and we don't want too much of that. So it's nice to get unfortified nutritional yeast. And this will add just kind of a cheesiness. We're not really going for cheese. It's just more of a deep kind of umami flavor. And let's see, lemon, we're gonna definitely make lemon, but I'm gonna add also a little bit of white um, champagne vinegar. So we're adding a little bit of that. And then we have some water and I'll probably end up using a little more water because I did use the prepared mustard. So it's going to be a little thicker. And then I just need the lemons. So I wash these before I put them up there. Um, I want zest. And whenever we talk about zest, it means we need to talk about doing the zesting first before the squeezing. So microplane, best, best gadget ever for this. Um, and we're going to zest this way so that the microplane catches all of the zest in the top. And I move 
the microplane and I move the lemon around. I call for a teaspoon. This is not an exact science. Sauces like this never are. I want you to taste and then tweak. So this is how you remove that zest from the microplane. You'll never get cut when you're putting your finger inside. The blades on the outside and only going up is the cutting motion or the grating motion. So you can put your finger going down and then inside you can put your finger in there and you'll never get cut. And it's not really sharp enough to really hurt yourself, but you, that's the cutting motion is going up. Okay, so that's plenty. We want three tablespoons or so for the proportions for this recipe of juice. So I want to do that in a separate bowl. I'll use one of these because I see seeds, which we should see seeds, right? <laughs> Plants have seeds, um, but I don't want the seeds in my sauce. Uh, Trina, I, has a, Trina, sorry, Trina has a question. Why wouldn't we heat the flax? Why would we? Why wouldn't we? Okay, excellent question. So flax, we consume for a variety of reasons, including the lignans, which is a type of fiber, which has been shown to reduce breast cancer risk, but also for the omega-3 fatty acids. And they are very sensitive to temperature. So it's not that you should never use flax in a cooked product. So something like a muffin, it calls for flax to use to help replace the egg, right? The binder functionality. And that's fine. And we see that people have better health outcomes when they have flax in the muffins than when they don't. But it's also nice to be able to rely on the flax if you consume it regularly as a source of the omega-3 fatty acids. And when they are subject to heat, then they lose some of those properties, okay? So whenever you can, add flax as a sprinkle. So for example, on um, oatmeal, I wouldn't add it when it, being cooked, I sprinkle it on top. So, so I have a lot of little seeds in here, but the seeds are come up easily with a fork. Don't bother trying to chase them around with a spoon. The fork is much more effective. Okay, so... And there's a question, are you doing anything on your own YouTube channel these days? I am doing a ton in the Foodie Bar way of life. So that's the place to find me. And you can find me through the nutritionprofessor.com. There. Okay, I need to measure three tablespoons. I actually have another measure. Here we go. So... I don't know how close we are. Looks like we're kind we're pretty close. Let me see. One, two, hey, we're right on. Again, it's not an exact science for the amount of lemon juice. I love this little reamer. I've had lots of squeezing contraptions for lemon squeezers, and that by far is the best. It has not broken. I've broken many trying to get the last bit of juice. Okay, so this is just a whisk of a fork. You could you could blend this if you wanted. I am not going to. I think this will be just fine. So you can see, and it will thicken even more because of the flax. You could omit the flax again if you didn't want it, but the flavor is going to be excellent and really complement 
the asparagus or the Brussels or the broccoli or whatever you choose to drizzle it on. Okay. So I'm going to show you with the asparagus, let me get a cookie sheet here. Do a little piece of. Now with the asparagus, since we're going to use the broiler, you don't want any parchment paper sticking up because it will burn and it will likely catch on fire. So we wanna make sure that that parchment paper is down all the way and you can either cut it or fold it but this will work and you can always take the parchment paper and crumble it up and then flatten it out that'll help sometimes if you have an unruly piece but i like to just take off just the very end you can do this with a knife or you can um, just break it. And to get a lot, you know, I think I'm probably going to toss them with the garlic powder in a bowl just to make sure I'm getting full coverage because I love the garlic on the asparagus and a little black pepper again. Now an additional ingredient, if you wanted, that would be a natural addition in a small amount would be turmeric to this sauce. So you could add a little pinch, but when you go too much, it the flavor will take over. So you don't, you just want a little tiny bit. You could also add some of the nigella sativa, the black feet, the black cumin as well. But because of the black pepper, the turmeric and black pepper act well together. So let me go ahead and toss these. My garlic powder. And black pepper. So, uh, Timory J says, does is does the heat destroy the omega three fatty acids for yes. things like flax seeds and chia seeds? Yes. Okay. More so with flax than with chia, but they're also kind of trapped inside the seeds, which is why you want to grind them but you want to keep them cool. So I keep my, especially the flax, I keep my flax seeds in the freezer whole, and then I grind them. And I actually have a little video uh, in the foodie bar way of life where I show, I grind them just enough for a pint or a single one cup mason jar. And then I put that in the fridge when it's ground and then I have it at my fingertips. So, but that, the reason why I put it, the whole flax seeds in the freezer because they don't need to be, but when I'm grinding it, it starts at a lower temperature. So it doesn't heat up. So I'm not going from room temperature to warm. I'm going from frozen to basically room temperature and then I get it right back in the fridge. Okay, so our beautiful asparagus, are just perfectly waiting and they are waiting for the oven, their time in the oven. And now I am going to talk about fruit salad. And this is gonna be the best. Now, I, I know this may sound a little presumptuous, but the best fruit salad you've ever had without question. And every time you make it, you can make it different. That is the cool part 
Okay, so let's move on to that. Now, where are we on the time? Ah, 49 seconds. Well, didn't that work out fantastic? So I am going to take this, these fritters out of the oven and flip them and then stick them back in and try to assess how long, how much longer they need. This is a little kitchen, but everything is just kind of at my fingertips. Um, Donna, one of our members of the Foodie Bar Way of Life, she said, I know you're in the different kitchen now because we obviously started when I was in California. Uh, she said, but I like this kitchen because you're just here and there and you've got everything at your hand, you know, fingertips, which is true. All right, that's our timer. Okay, so I want to look at these. They look so good. Now, they might they're going to be very tender. So, I might let them go instead of flipping them. Well, they flipped. But I think I'm going to let them go another I think I'll let them do their thing without even flipping them. I'll go another 10. Now, as you saw, this one flipped. It's golden brown on the bottom. Fabulous. Oh, so tender. So delicious. These are cooking a little faster. So I'm seeing on the edge here a little more color. Oh, this little one was barely, it was kind of a junior all the extra piece pieces okay these are like crash test dummy I, this is my i'm eating this you just mush it together so i will put these back in you're not really cooking much you know it's you're just trying to put all the flavors together okay so let me set a timer I'm gonna do eight minutes and then we'll see. Okay, time for fruit salad. I'll come back to that. Okay. Now, this is loopy. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna get a picture so that you will see what's happening here, but I want you to see options. So a friend of ours was helping us get ready to move way back when, um, and we had her over for brunch. And I wasn't sure what fruit she liked. I wasn't sure how she um, enjoyed, you know, what different types of fruit and what toppings. And so I decided to do a foodie bar for the fruit salad. So instead of mixing everything together, I did the chopping like I normally would, but I just kept everything in separate bowls. And then everybody made their salad the way they wanted. And I had lime and lemon, which I have lemon and I have lime in the fridge. Um, and then I played with some fun toppings. So I'm gonna talk through a few this is we just use for lemon, a few of these ingredients. And then just, I want you to open your mind to the possibility of taking this approach, not only with fruit salad, but with lots of different meals, because this invites people to try to expand their flavor and texture preferences, but to also honor their what they like, instead of forcing them to pick out ingredients in this fruit salad that's just kind of gotten over mushed. I'm not using any banana. Banana tends to get really dark and really mushy really quickly. So if you do want to have banana as an option, you definitely want the foodie bar way approach. 
so that if someone doesn't want that in their fruit salad, they don't need to have it. I have a lot of fun ideas here. And some, I, I prepared the last page of that PDF is basically a treasure trove of ideas for you to play with to completely expand your mind when it comes to fruit salad. And I have many of the items here, but also there's a lot more that I didn't. Today, I went through my list and I would have had 30 little dishes of options. <laughs> and so at some point I was like, okay, they get the idea. They'll get the idea when I just show these, but it's amazing how much you have on hand um, between your fridge and your freezer. And I wanna teach you a few um, concepts and techniques. So first thing that's in my mind is orange. So I have some gorgeous, these are the red navels, okay? So I chopped them up. Now, I left half an orange for, for me to remind you, if we have oranges in the fridge or out, nobody will eat them, typically, except me. I'll peel an orange and I'll, I'll bring it to work. I'll peel it and eat it. Nobody else does that. But if I have it sliced up, so... Oh, to the soccer when we were little and we had the orange wedges. Remember, remember when there was a time when families brought fruit for their kids and not junky snacks on the sidelines? Okay, sorry. But yes, we can go back to oranges. But when I have the orange and I have it sliced into wedges like this that everybody just pulls off they just disappear. It is amazing how easy they are for people to eat. So think about that in your own life or your own family. Where can I make things just a little easier to reduce that resistance so that the healthiest option is also the most convenient? And that is kind of a theme song of the Foodie Bar way of life. That's what we do in there. We make the best choices, the easiest. So by simply slicing this orange, it now becomes way more appetizing for a family member to grab and enjoy. So that was just a little side note because I just had to, it's crazy trying to get family to eat things. Sometimes you just have to take that little extra step. Okay, next, we're gonna talk about apples. So I want you to look for the reddest, the most vibrantly colored of your fruit because that's where the phytonutrients, the plant compounds that make up the color, they're also phytonutrients, plant chemicals, but nutrients, right? that our body uses to help protect our cells. So I am slicing, this is a pink lady, I believe. And I always buy organic apples. So they are heavily sprayed. So I need a little, here we go, garbage bowl always. So that's one of the ways I prioritize with spending money on groceries is I will buy organic as much as possible, but especially apples and strawberries and celery and greens, especially these um, corn, right? Ingredients that I know I, they're either heavily pesticide laden or from EWG, if you wanna learn about that environmental working group, ewg.org, um, or they're GMO and I'm concerned about that. Okay, so apples, apples will brown. So you wanna do this right before you serve and you can always take a little bit of fresh lemon juice and toss them in lemon juice or mix them with 
the orange, if you want to put those two together. So this is a nice crispy apple, which I love. So I can do the apple here. It's going to turn, so let me get this lemon and we'll toss it a little bit. I want it to make, make it to the pictures. Chef AJ, did you have anything? Uh, yes, yes, I didn't want to interrupt. So we have a question from, okay. where'd it go? Okay, here it is uh, from Jay. Doesn't black pepper potentiate most everything and not just turmeric? It does. It is a superstar with turmeric and but it's true because it acts on the liver. So to reduce the amount that the liver breaks down because our liver is a detoxifying organ. So its job is to find something in the blood and break it down. And so because um, the pepperones in black pepper can stall that, you'll have higher levels of the turmeric in your blood. Okay, so actually I'm gonna keep this out because I want a few slices to be able to serve with the fruit salad. Right, and there's actually another turmeric question, which okay. is fresh raw turmeric less likely to have mineral adulterants than the powdered turmeric. I would, I don't know, I would guess yes. I buy the issue with the powdered turmeric is how it's processed. So if it's processed in a factory and you, and often it's the machines that can um, be the source of the heavy metal. So if you're just buying the turmeric and remember for turmeric root, keep it in the freezer, scrub it just like ginger, keep it in the freezer and then microplane it. That's Excellent. There's also different properties, though, that are beneficial in the dry versus the fresh. So I use both, but I um, I do my best to source the turmeric and not try to get the biggest amount for the cheapest price. Um, but I also have some in the freezer. I like to use both. OK, that timer went off. So I. Okay, yay, these fritters look gorgeous. And now I'm going to turn it to broil and put in the asparagus. Okay, I am doing a timer for two minutes. Hopefully it won't go on fire. Okay, let me talk through some of these other ingredients. Okay, so I have kiwi. I have gold and green. Kiwi are incredible sources of vitamin C. They're also amazing for your DNA and can even help with irritable bowel disease. I use the, the peel right on it. I just eat them with the peel, doesn't bother me, but you can peel them. I have cutie mandarin, little different flavor than the red navel. This is a gorgeous champagne mango. So I didn't tell you, Chef AJ, and I didn't grow this one, but I have four different types of mangoes growing in our yard. And so this is a honey or champagne. This actually is a champagne mango. There are so many mangoes, so many different varieties. I went to a mango tasting in Central Florida Fruit Society. I'm part of that group. And we had, I think we had 17 different mangoes to taste. I mean, it's, oh, it's incredible. 
Incredible. So I have mango here. And then I have strawberries. So strawberries are the only fruit where the seeds are on the outside. Isn't that cool? Okay, and it's hollow on the inside. So organic is great. Eat the greens right off the top. Okay. And I have, I'm so proud of these. Probably can't see them very closely, but these are my very own mulberries. So I grew white mulberries and the red, black mulberries. Right now in the yard, I just picked these this morning. Let me check my broiler. Not yet. Okay. Um, so these little mulberries are from our trees. I'm so excited. They're actually in grow bags. They're not even in, they're not even big trees. And I've been patient every year, a few, a few, a few, and now it's full. So now every day I have to go out after work and pick them before the birds get them. But this is a white mulberry that I grew. So we have some mulberries. I also have ideas for you about incorporating some vegetables. And I know that sounds kind of crazy in a fruit salad, but it's really not. And it's something you can try and see if you love it. Here's some gorgeous cucumber, but fennel is excellent. Arugula, especially with melons, fabulous. Arugula, melon, especially watermelon, and my feta cheese in the foodie bar way. Amazing. Very, very, very good. There's all kinds of different combinations. Jicama. So I have some jicama that I will cut up before I take a picture. Then we have herbs. So this is basil that I'm growing from last year, last May's planting. I can't believe it on my garden tower, it's still the same plant giving me basil. I have some sweet basil and some spear, um, no, sweet mint, sorry, and some spearmint. So I have two different types of mint. Always grow mint in a pot or else it will take over your yard. This is pineapple sage. And then I have some parsley from the backyard too. And then I'm smelling, all right, I knew it, off. Okay, we charred, charred that parchment. Perfect asparagus though, yay. Got all it, right. question. Got asparagus. a question. Go ahead. Okay, this is from uh, Lori. What do you say to people when they say organic produce really isn't organic? They have some pesticides on them as well from the overspray from the non-organic plants. You do your very best. <laughs> and uh, when you, you're always gonna get an environmental exposure, just walking outside your door, right? Depending on where you live. Where we lived in California, we had a lot of agriculture. We were, we were right in the middle of central California. And there is going to be that environmental, but at least when you're choosing an organic, it may not be 100% because of the overspray, but they're not spraying directly on the plants in the soil. So we do the best that we can. And the more that we buy those organic products and demand that, the more those companies realize that this is viable. People are willing to choose this and they want this. And so the more we have of that, the less pesticides we hope, you know, in the environment. And it's also for the workers that have to, you know, they're subject to that. Something that's important as well, oh, these are perfect, is that it's important to buy as local as you can and ask 
those growers. So go to the farmer's market. I used to do the California Bountiful when I was in California, those shows. And I did like 50 of them. They're all on my website, thenutritionprofessor.com. They're all up there. But we would, I would have conversations with the growers at the farmer's market. And I remember coming up to one that was all raspberries and the raspberries were gorgeous. And I, there was no big organic sign. And so I said, do you spray? I, I mean, just, there was no one else there. It was just me asking at the table and the gentleman looked at me and he said, no, we live on this land. We don't spray. But the process to get the organic certification was like a five year process and they were in like year three. So have a conversation if possible with the growers, the local growers, and they'll tell you. And I've asked others and they said, yeah, but we only spray at this time or at, you know, or they'll tell me straight up, oh yeah, bugs love these, we have to spray. And I say, thank you for being honest. You know, I mean, it's it's important. So this is gorgeous asparagus. This is not stringy. This is delicious. And we can just drizzle some of this sauce. The sauce is nice and thick. You can thin it out as you wish. You can put it in a squeeze bottle. You can put it in a bag and cut the bottom corner off and use that to drizzle on top, okay? And then I have just a few more things I wanted to mention and more lemon with the fruit salad. And that is adding some other textures. One thing I highly recommend is a combination of frozen and fresh. Now you may think, what do you mean? It keeps the salad cool. So I've sliced up some frozen cranberries that I bought during the season, November, December. I packed them in my freezer because I love whole cranberries. And so I just put the bags right in there and then I rinse them when I'm ready to use them. So I've sliced up some whole cranberries and I have also taken some frozen blueberries, the organic wild blueberries, and put those in a bowl. And those are sitting in the freezer. So you can do that with cherries. You can do that with pineapple. Actually, speaking of pineapple, this is some pineapple that I had in the freezer that is rose pineapple, pink pineapple. Looks like pineapple from the outside. You slice it open and it's pink. Amazing. So I'm going to add that to our fruit salad setup. And then the last thing is to think about drizzles. Drizzles and sprinkles. So this is where it gets really fun. You can imagine having this whole thing set up and having everybody try. Now, if you don't have a big group, we're just three of us here at the house. I know what fruits and vegetables everybody likes. So we're just going to do a handful if I wasn't doing this show, right? And so you don't have to feel all this pressure that you have to put all this out. It's just this mix and match idea. You could do it like this today and then tomorrow you could do other ideas. So the sprinkles and the drizzles, I want to just share a few ideas. And that includes some balsamics. So I know that Chef AJ is a big fan of California balsamic. So a couple that might be good, this is an island balsamic, island pineapple balsamic, sweet heat if you're willing to play with a little bit of heat, pear bals balsamic, and then I have other companies, their pomegranate, raspberry, Think about, you know, wow, vinegar. I wasn't thinking of vinegar. Yeah, consider vinegar. Also, I said sweet heat. Cayenne is amazingly good on fruit salad. Just a little pinch or more if you love it. Aleppo pepper is also a fun one and it's granular so you can just sprinkle. And then my go-tos are always my chai spice blend that's in the book and the pumpkin pie spice. 
And those are great ways to incorporate multiple, very high antioxidant herbs and spices. And then lastly, nuts. You can do some walnuts. You can do some hemp hearts. You can do some coconut if you wish. So you can imagine this could definitely be a party. Any last questions? Let me look. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, how long does your sauce last in the refrigerator? Oh, this sauce will last two weeks at least. You could likely freeze it if you wanted to or do half of a batch. One batch makes a little more than a third of a cup, so two thirds of a cup or so. But if you, you can play around with that, more water, less water, you know, because again, this is not science on this sauce as far as doesn't need to be exact like baking. It's super flexible, but because of the lemon juice, because of the vinegar, because of the mustard, there's really nothing in there that's gonna go bad. So it'll last two weeks easy. Nice. And my question, when are you coming back to visit? Oh, I don't know. We had such a fun visit in December. I had a blast. We, the timing was just perfect to co coincide with your meetup group to go out for dinner. And that just filled my heart. I loved it. So as soon as I have plans to come back to visit, you know, you'll be getting a text from me. Well, I can't wait to see you again. Why did you have to move before I got here? I don't know. We did not coordinate that well uh, at all. Oh, just kidding. Well, thank you. You're just a wonderful presenter and your recipes are delicious. And wherever you're watching, the recipes, you can get them just by going below the video on YouTube. That's where the recipes are. And just click the little URL and they will be sent to you immediately. Yes. And you can respond to any emails that I send you because it's actually me. I don't have a team. So if you have a question, you can send me an email right back and I'll get back to you. Right. Thanks so much, Tim Marie, and happy Take Easter care, to everybody. you and your family. Bye. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in about 90 minutes at 1 p.m. I'm going to be talking to Tim Kaufman. He used to weigh over 400 pounds. He has this fabulous new book called Escape. It comes out tomorrow, and he's going to show you how you can get started today. Take care, everyone.